great to be here in Tallinn. A few years ago, in 2014 and 2015, I was actually sat in the crowd. If you see the 2014 um, picture, I'm there somewhere. And you can see Bart Schutz jumping in the background. That was good times. So I'm really glad to be here speaking to you about the shocking truth about optimization programs. I tried to get in a sound effect, but it didn't work, so I'm going to try that right now. So I'm going to be talking about the shocking truth about optimization programs. Dun, dun, dun. That didn't work. Okay. And number five will make you cry. So I was speaking to Carl Gillis, who I really look up to, and he's here. And I said, Carl, I want to make my talk really punchy, that people will really pay attention. And he's like, you know BuzzFeed? I was like, yeah, I know BuzzFeed. He's like, you need to use something about that. So this is all Carl Gillis, right? You can thank him later. So my name is Manuel de Costa. I'm the founder of Effective Experiments. As Don said, um, I also run an online CRO community called Conversion World, and we run a conference, an online conference, but that's enough about me. You're here to learn. So let's start. What this talk isn't about, okay? So if you're here to learn about how to run A-B tests or what tactics you should try, which testing tool you should use, how to analyze tests, or about statistics, completely wrong talk. We're not going to be talking about that, so please feel free to leave. We are going to be talking about some stats about the industry first, though. So eConsultancy ran this uh, survey. They run a survey every year. And they asked companies, what are the three top digital areas uh, that are priorities for your organizations? So if you look at that list, you can see targeting and personalization on top, which Andre talked about, personalization. You can see conversion optimization number three. Social media number two, forget that. But it's a high priority. Good news. We ran our own survey, about 973 odd respondents, um, and we asked them, um, what about budgets? Have they increased or have they decreased in-house? Everyone on the agency side and client side reported it's increased. Good. Let's look at the focus on CRO activities. Again, a positive um, spin on this, 81% um, on the agency side and 72% on uh, the client side saying the focus on CRO activities has increased. This is really good news for us, right? But over time, over the last year and a half, I've been speaking to companies both big and small on client side and on agency side, asking them about the way they run their optimization programs. And what I found is that there are good optimization programs, there are bad optimization programs, and there are plain ugly optimization programs. And so the shocking truth, let's cut to the chase, right? Let's not keep you hanging any longer. The shocking truth about optimization programs is simply they're not done well. And what I want to do in this talk is I want to explore the reasons why they're not done well. So if you're starting out or if you're somewhere uh, in the early stages of your optimization programs, you can see the common pitfalls that can potentially derail your optimization program. Learn from these mistakes and then improve your own uh, programs. So I can't really see people because the lights are too br bright on me. So what I want you to do is when I, when I call, uh, ask something, just clap instead of raise your hands. Uh, who's here from the agency side? Don't, don't raise your hand. I just said clap, right? Uh, who's here from client side? I can see a lot of disappointment being client side. OK, great. And so now let's look at where you're on the, oh, what's that? I don't know. <laughs> and then let's look at where you're on the maturity level, right? So who's not got an optimization program in place at all right now or thinking of starting one? Oh, wow, that's good. Sujan, only you. Um, who's started their optimization program, but it's fairly new in the last three to six months? Okay, good. <laughs> Andre, you don't count. <laughs> um, what about people who've got fairly, somewhat mature optimization programs? So you've been running it for the last year, year and a half. And who's got really mature optimization programs? They're running about 100 tests every, year, every month. That's really good. That's really good. So let's, let's explore those reasons, right? Why do optimization programs fail? So the first one is lack of knowledge. Now, if you look at conversion optimization, it's still a fairly new industry, right? We've been only doing it for the last, it's just been picking up steam over the last um, four or five years. And so being a new industry, there is a lot of gap in the knowledge that people have. They, 
They're coming over from backgrounds like SEO and PPC agencies, moving from full service agencies to CRO specialist agencies, or adding CRO as their own, um, as an offering. So even then, there is a gap in the knowledge. And if you look at any two CRO programs, they're completely different. Try this out later, right? When, you, when you're doing your networking later on, speak to, speak to someone else and ask them how they do run their optimization program. And I guarantee you, their processes of running their optimization program is going to be different to yours. So there is no standard. We don't have a standard as an industry for how an optimization program should be run. So how do we counter that? You're here. You're here to learn. And that's good. So conferences like this are really good for upping your game, for really understanding how people are running their optimization programs, what challenges they face. So quite a few good uh, conferences, Conversion Hotel, Conversion Jam that Thorne mentioned, Conversion Conference, and also CXL Institute, uh, which runs quite a, few, re quite a lot of good courses, which you should be taking. The next challenge, and this sort of flows in from the, the, the knowledge gap, is that people don't have a structured process. Now, you might think of this and say, we have a structured process. We always do it. But no, even yesterday I was speaking to someone, and they, they completely skipped out the hypothesis creation because they just got ideas from blogs and what other people are doing. It still happens. So let's look at the CRO process. OK, let's go back to basics. So before that, let me talk to you about the survey that we ran. And we asked people, um, do you agree or disagree? We have a strong, well-defined process for our optimization program. 33% said they disagree, and 31% were somewhere in the middle. They, didn't, they, they weren't sure of that. So the optimization process is fairly straightforward, right? If you look at it, you, know what, you need to know what your business goals are. Why on earth are you running an optimization program? You do your data collection. You do your data analysis. Try and find out what insights you can pick out from there. Create hypotheses. And then design your test, build your test, test it. And then finally, get your learnings. Fairly straightforward. But as I said, even in conversations that we have with people, you will see people skipping this pro uh, parts of the process whenever it suits them. The hypothesis creation is the, the biggest and the, uh, the, the most important part of the optimization process. Because if you don't get that right, you're running tests that are just proving whatever you wanted to prove, right? So do not skip this process uh, at all. And there are lots of good frameworks out there. You've got the wider funnel infinity uh, optimization process that goes again through the same thing. If you look at it, the same process repeats. You look at the Research Excel framework. Again, it gives you that structure. So there are structured frameworks out there that you should be following, but the basics are always the same. Now we come to no buy-in. And at this point, you probably think, OK, we have buy-in. We've got. Um, you know, the, the stakeholders giving us budget. We can hire new people. And the stakeholders, we think of them as the hippos, right? The hippo, the highest paid, person opinion, uh, highest paid person's opinion. But what tends to happen is we view hippos more like this. They're always against us. They're fighting against us. They don't want us to, they don't want to push our ideas and uh, let us deploy our tests. And we think of ourselves as superheroes. We're saviors. We're going to save this business. And our tests are going to bring in millions for the company. But what then happens is you get this us versus them mentality. We're right, they're wrong. And they're thinking the same thing. We're right, they're wrong. So this us versus them mentality eventually boils to a point where it will completely derail a program. And why does that happen? The simple truth is everyone has their own agenda. Your developers in your company have their own agenda. The designers have their own agenda. Your stakeholders have their own agenda. And then you're coming in with your test idea. And they're like, why should we care about your idea? Morgan uh, talked about silos yesterday. And he said how companies are still working in silos. And we need to break down those silos. So if you have this structure right now where designers and developers and um, optimizers are working in their own little bubble, you will face problems further down the line. Because again, everyone has their own agenda. They don't really care about what you do about your shitty little test. And optimization is a team sport. Even if you're one person in that company, you need to be able to work with the other people 
towards that same common goal of improving the conversions, to improving the revenue. So you need this. You need to do this. You need to engage, and you need to educate. You need to reach out to them and show them what you do and make them care. And you can make them care by educating them. So I prepared a few strategies or some tactics that you can use. The first one is be being teach them through uh, CRO through examples, right? Again, as I said, they don't know what you do. They don't care about what you do. So make them care. Show them how you came up uh, with a winning test. But don't just show them the results. Show them the process, the thought process behind them. Show them how you looked into the data, came up with the insights, how you then created the hypothesis, and then deployed the test. That will give them a, b a better understanding of the entire process, of the challenges you face, and really how you end up coming up with those winning, uh, 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 winning tests. The second one is hold a testing hackathon. Now, hackathon uh, is quite common in the developer, uh, developer circle, but simply put, you bring people together from the design phase, from the design team, from the development team, the business intelligence team, uh, the management, bring them all together, break them up into teams. So one team will be a designer, developer, business, uh, intelligence, and a manager, and another team will, will be the same thing. Give them the challenges and get them to give their ideas about it, okay? Get them to sh uh, share what they would think would be a winning test. What does that do? That gets them involved, that gets, them, that gets everyone engaged. And then they can vote on those ideas, right? So get them to put, some, put, put a bet on it. Put like put five euros on it and see um, if their test idea will win. Display the results, have a leaderboard, get people more excited about it. If they have their own idea invested in this process, they will be uh, championing you forward because now they're seeing their ideas being uh, accepted and they are more happy to help you out. And the last one is always provide visibility of your work. Currently, a lot of companies use tools like Excel and Trello and Google Docs to keep track of their optimization program. That's good for documentation. But when it comes to sharing those results, sharing those insights company-wide, there is a problem there. So those archaic tools are not going to help you. There's a new wave of tools come out of there. So you've got Growth Hackers Projects, you've got Iridian, you've also got effective experiments out there. Check them out. They will change the game for you in your optimization program. Lack of resources. We again talked to our, our group, our uh, uh, survey respondents, about what do they struggle most in their optimization program. And 57% of companies said lack of resources. How many people over here have problems getting tests running because of development? Clap, please. <laughs> Andrea, you need to hire more developers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So that is a key problem, right? So even if you don't have development problems, you'll have other bottlenecks somewhere else, either in the QA or in design or even getting the test off the ground. You need to be able to identify your bottlenecks in your process because once you know where those bottlenecks are, you can optimize it. You can improve it. We're all optimizers. We need to optimize our own processes to be able to fix it. So what do you do when you have these issues? If you have the budget, hire new people. If you have development problems, you can also work with external partners, right? So you can hire agencies, you can hire freelancers. Uh, there are also really good um, com companies out there like testing.agency that allow you to, that basically are a third party source. You can give them your test, they build it for you, and send it back. Do not let bottlenecks derail your optimization program. And finally, I said number five will make you cry. That was clickbait, Carl. He said it worked. I don't know, no one's crying. So. The way we set up our optimization programs is broken. We always start with this. We always start with the tools. What tools should we use to set up our, to, to run A-B tests? What tools should we use to um, create surveys? Tools do not make up an optimization program. You do not start with this, because if you start with this, you're going about it the completely wrong way. You want tools? There are tools out there. Okay? You want uh, survey tools? Go for it. You want testing tools? There's loads out there, whatever your budget. You want se uh, session replay, hot jar, user, um, full story, you know, tools. There's no lack of tools out there. 
But the key foundation of your optimization program is this. These are the three pillars of your optimization program. The people, and not just any people, the, the right people, the data-driven, hungry, ambitious people that will want to be, uh, you know, prove themselves and prove th the fact that they can mine those insights from the data and give you winning tests. Process. We talked about process earlier. That is a, a, another a key pillar in your foundation, getting the right process. And finally, priority. You, have, you may have the right people. You may have all the, the right processes. But when I talk about priority, if you don't have the right priority in your company, you'll be sat waiting, doing nothing. And board optimizers eventually will leave your company. So I found this little comic strip online, and that really struck me. It, said, it says, I want a real team effort on this project. A key mistake that optimization programs when they start, or the managers, they, they say this, on this project. Optimization is not a project. Having that mentality of time boxing optimization into a, a three month proof of concept, or let's try it for one month and see what happens, that is the wrong mentality to have because you're time boxing it and you're thinking, oh, if it doesn't work, who knows? We'll, we won't do it then. Think of optimization as a business as usual activity that you do every single day. It has to be done as part of your processes, uh, whether it's peak season or whether it's not. Don't stop optimizing. So I don't know if I've been rushing or not because Tone's not given me his time, but anyways. Um, if you enjoyed this talk, uh, I am running a course with CXL in August. It's called Building and Scaling an Optimization Program in Your Company. That's on the 15th of August. Thank you. I'm eager to learn more about your own optimization programs. <laughs>